Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> Let us begin today with number 456, 456. I will come to you in the silence. I will lift you from all your fear. You will hear my voice. I claim you as my choice. Be still and know I am here. I am hope for all who are hopeless. I am eyes for all who long to see. In the shadow of the night, I will be your light. Come and rest in me. Do not be afraid, I am with you. I have called you each by name. Come and follow me, I will bring you home. I love you and you are mine. And so we begin our celebration by blessing ourselves. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with each of you. And coming into the Lord's presence, we ask for forgiveness and healing, especially for the times when we were too slow to respond to God's love as he reaches out to us. And we ask today for healing. Lord Jesus, you guide us in ways of righteousness. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you cleanse us and renew us. Christ have, mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are loving and forgiving. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true, Grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. James. Know this, my dear brothers and sisters. Everyone should be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger, for anger does not accomplish the righteousness of God. Therefore, put away all filth and evil excess and humbly welcome the word that has been planted in you and is able to save your souls. Be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deluding yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like a man who looks at his own face in a mirror. He sees himself, then goes off and promptly forgets what he looked like. But the one who peers into the perfect law of freedom and perseveres, and is not a hearer who forgets, but a doer who acts, such a one is blessed in what he does. If anyone thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his heart, his religion is vain. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God and the Father is this to care for orphans and widows in their affliction, and to keep oneself unstained by the world. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Who shall live on your holy mountain, O Lord? Who shall live on your holy mountain, O Lord? He who walks blamelessly and does justice, who thinks the truth in his heart and slanders not with his tongue. Who shall live on your holy mountain, O Lord? Who harms not his fellow man, nor takes up a reproach against his neighbor, by whom the reprobate is despised, while he honors those who fear the Lord? Who shall live on your holy mountain, O Lord? Who lends not his money at usury, and accepts no bribe against the innocent? He who does these things shall never be disturbed. Who shall shall live live on your holy mountain, mountain, O Lord? Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Alleluia. May the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ enlighten the eyes of our hearts that we may know what is the hope that belongs to his call. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When Jesus and his disciples arrived at Bethsaida, people brought to him a blind man and begged Jesus to touch him. He took the blind man by the hand and led him outside the village. Putting spittle on his eyes, he laid his hands on the man and asked, Do you see anything? Looking up, the man replied, I see people looking like trees and walking. Then he laid hands on the man's eyes a second time, and he saw clearly. His sight was restored, and he could see everything distinctly. Then he sent him home and said, Do not even go into the village. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear friends in Christ, I love today's gospel, and the reason for it is that it says something about how Jesus in his humanity, how God reaches out to each and every one of us in a very gentle and caring way. Many of the miracles that Jesus performed were almost almost anonymous. Some simply touched Jesus and they were cured. Jesus never said a word. Sometimes he would ask, who touched me? But in today's gospel, others, friends of the man who is blind, bring him to Jesus and ask that he be healed. And what does Jesus do? He takes the hand of the man, as his friends had done, and he takes him outside of town. And now begins a very slow process. He asked the man at first, what do you see? And what he sees is some strange figures. It looks like people, but it could be trees. He doesn't see very clearly. And then Jesus touches him again, and this time he sees like we do. St. James, in today's first reading, I also love that particular passage because it speaks today to the gospel. Sometimes those readings do not always coincide, but today, in a very special way, they tell us something about ourselves. And the word that jumps out at me, if you listen carefully, is what James said. He talks about slow, to be slow to see slowly, to heal slowly, to respond slowly. 
to reflect on what's happening in our lives. And you know, that word is really, it goes against the grain for all of us. Because today everything has to be, has to be immediate. And we think this is the way life is. And then we get frustrated because we don't have time to reflect. We don't even have time to think. What does it all mean and how does it all fit together? And of course, James is one of those letters that he writes that most of us would like to ignore. Why am I saying that? Because one of the things, and he doesn't say it in today's reading, but it alludes to it. He says the most serious sin that you and I can commit is the sin of the tongue. Wow. The sin of the tongue. Put it very plainly. When we respond in frustration, <coughs> in frustration or anger, we know the hurt that we cause, don't we? And as much as I want to say, I'm sorry I said that and you and I have done that many times, somehow in our memory, it stays. It doesn't go away. And no matter how much loving we do and how much caring we do afterwards, this is that moment that always comes to the surface. And then we begin to question, did God forgive? Did I forgive myself? The tongue is the most destructive element in our lives. Because even when I say something hurtful and you do, no matter how many times we say, I'm sorry, I didn't mean it. That might be true, but the fact is we did say it. And the hurt doesn't go away. And if you don't believe that, then just think about who are some of those situations in your life where they keep coming back. And it gets, it gets worse when you get older. Because suddenly we remember things when we were in second and third and fifth grade. And you say, how could that be? Well, the memory is part of it. It's never a matter that God hasn't forgiven us. He does. But sometimes we have not forgiven ourselves. Or we're reminded how devastating those moments were when we just let go. Somebody pushes the button and boy, we're ready with an answer. And we see it, that's, that's the lifestyle that we have today in our world, isn't it? We see it wherever we go. And after a while you begin to think, oh, that must be okay, everybody's doing it. And that's why St. James says, you're way off base. Be slow. He says, be quick to hear, be slow to speak, be slow to respond to anger. It's a teaching lesson. We listen, but it doesn't sink in, and it evaporates before we even finish the story. Or we want to respond immediately. We, something touches our lives, and we want to say, wait a minute, I know what you're trying to tell me, or you know, this is not the way it is. We don't give a person a chance, because we just want to get right back for whatever at that moment strikes us as being important to me or to you. And then he says, be slow to anger, because anger is what creates maliciousness, divisiveness, gossip. Yes, gossip. Just think about some of the people that you thought about today and some of the people maybe that you talked about. Was it very affirming? Was it very loving, or was it just gossip putting other people down? You see, there is a relationship with that. And so how does this tie in to David the Gospel? There's one dimension, and Jesus shows us by his own action that the man who was blind only gradually was able to begin to see. I put it in another way were slow learners. Even when we know what is right, it takes us a long time. Or we just blabber out and let it go 
and then have to come back and say, I'm sorry, I didn't mean it. Yeah, sure. Why didn't we take time and rather than immediately respond, say, okay, maybe I need to think about this. <laughs> Am I asking the impossible? Yes, for most of us, because that's not our way of doing it. We want to be immediate. And St. James says, be careful what you say. And many times if you reflect, it's better not to say anything at all because it will be malicious, it will be destructive, and you and I know how terrible and how difficult it is for us to accept when somebody puts us down or when somebody makes negative comments about us or our families or people. And so Jesus today shows us the man, he could have, he had, could have cured him like he did many others immediately, but it was slow. And I think sometimes we need then to stand back and say, okay, Lord, help me to see what's going on here. Help me to see whether I heard correctly, whether I see clearly, or whether I just am so into myself that it's always about what I want. And as we enter the season of uh, Lent coming next week with Ash Wednesday beginning, it might be a question to ask ourselves is, what is it that I need to let go or what is it that I need to see more clearly that I never took the time to reflect and just do it as always, be destructive, be angry, be frustrated, be disappointed? What is it that we need to let go? Our man in the gospel only gradually began to see, and maybe that's an example of what happens to us for slow learners, and maybe our prayer should be, Lord, help me to see what I need to see. Help me to hear what I need to hear. And then give me the strength to, to reach out and to respond with love rather than with anger and frustration. God knows the desires of our hearts and he hears our prayers. And so today we pray for all who shepherd the church, hoping that they heed God's will and seek the power to carry it out. And that means all of us. For this we pray to the Lord. For all who strive to observe and teach the commandments of the Lord and to respond with love and compassion, we pray to the Lord. For all of us, when we strive to be faithful servants, sharing the good news of the gospel with others, try to live the good news ourselves. For this we pray to the Lord. For all of those who ardently search for wisdom and truth, and again, that is what we do when we reflect conscientiously and in peace, so that we truly see what God wants us to do and who he wants us to become. For this we pray to the Lord. We pray for all the members of the Little Flower Society and the people that come here to the museum and to the Shrine of St. Therese, leaving their petitions here, that through the intercession of St. Therese, God will answer all of our needs according to God's will, we pray to the Lord. Amen. For Nevis Narona and Esther Tanislas Narona, and for all of those whom the Lord has called to himself, that they enjoy God's presence forever, we pray to the Lord. Amen. And for a moment now, let each of us make his or her private intention. And for all of these intentions, let us pray to the Lord. Amen. Gracious and loving God, we thank you now for listening to all of our needs, and we pray that your will be done through Christ our Lord. Amen. The offertory collection that we take up is for the upkeep of the shrine, and we thank you for your generosity. And then let us turn at this point to number 584. 
We are many parts, we are all one body, and the gifts we share, we were given to share. May the spirit of love make us one indeed, one the love that we share. One our hope in despair, one the cross that we bear. God of all, we look to you. We would be your servants too. Let us be your love to all the world. We are many parts. We are all one body, and the gifts we have, we are given to share. May the spirit of love make us one indeed, one the love that we share, one our hope in despair, one the cross that we bear. And so, my brothers and sisters, let us now pray that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this offering, O Lord, we pray, cleanse and renew us, and may it become for those who do your will <coughs> the source of eternal reward. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And Lift up your hearts. Up and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him, with great goodness, you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore, we too extol with all the angels, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes, in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, 
When supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, our faithful spouse, Saint Therese, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. And may the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Richard our Bishop, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, our merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we now dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, and by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with each one of you. Amen. Thank you. And now let us reach out and share the peace of Christ with each other. Peace Lord be with you. Peace Lord be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter unto my roof 
but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
they ate and had their fill, and what they craved, the Lord gave them. They were not disappointed in what they craved. Let us pray. Having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O Lord, that we may along, that we may always long for that food by which we truly live. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord is with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Eucharistic celebration is now ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord and one another. And we greet Mary, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Lady of Mount Carmel, St. Therese, just want to remind you, the bookstore is always open for possibilities of some religious goods, so don't forget that. Have a wonderful day. God bless.